Now, we spoke about the ACC earlier and their weakened position, as I put it, relative to the SEC and the Big Ten, and the possibility that schools could try to leave the conference eventually to join one of the two bigger conferences. Well, the ACC is holding winter meetings in Charlotte this week, and the new, Clem- uh, excuse me, new Clemson AD, Graham Neff, was quoted as saying, we'll have a lot of discussions on how to close the revenue gap in the ACC. Apparently, one of the topics that's at the front end of that conversation, according to a story over at theclemsoninsider.com, could be unequal distribution of revenue. Yes, that is the thing that is widely credited with destroying the Southwest slash Big 8 slash Big 12 comp, right? Like, I, I'm sure people remember the Longhorn Network and the fact that Texas A&M is now in the SEC. But e- either way, uh, former ACC Commissioner John Swafford, who was the ACC head from 1997 through 2021, he made the same mistake that Scottie Pippen did years ago. He chose long-term security without understanding market change. His deal with the SBN, while it does lock in all of the ACC members together in a grant of rights, it goes all the way through 20. 2036. Now that's still 13 years away, and that deal is already considered a bargain for ESPN, much the same way that the CBS deal for the uh, SEC Game of the Week was viewed for years and years, uh, which ultimately ended the relationship between the conference and the network, but either way. So for the ACC, who is projected to fall in the neighborhood of $50 million annually behind SEC and Big Ten schools, this has become a giant problem. And so the Clemson AD, Neff, said that everybody has their hat or their polo on for different schools based on where you invest, what your priorities are, and probably what your appetite is. But everybody is at the table and understands it's time to order. So I've been pleased and optimistic about the general understanding within the league that, hey, this is something we really need to look at, and that's not easy. I emphasize that because I don't take it lightly, because forever, the ACC, let alone all other conferences that I'm aware of, has been equal revenue share. So the notion of kind of jumping the ditch or really considering rolling up the sleeves on, hey, we need to look at this differently, I think there's a really good understanding of it. Now, I'll tell you, that's easy to say for the AD of one of the premier athletic programs in that conference. Clemson has been awesome under Dabo Sweeney, And the Tigers football program, which is the front porch of most universities, is responsible for all but one of the ACC's college football playoff appearances, the other one being Jameis Winston and Florida State back in 2014. Uh, But the newly expanded 12-team CFP is certainly going to help raise the financial floor for ACC members. But where distribution used to be equal, uh, per that story at the Clemson Insider, Neff said he believes there's an understanding around the league that distribution can be constructed in a way that incentivizes future success, which I suppose makes sense, right? The goal for the ACC is to not let programs like Clemson, Florida State, and Miami get upset with the revenue distribution to the point that they feel like they have to move to another conference in order to keep up with their uh, athletic brand uh, peer. But you you can't go about it by just handing Clemson more money because they're Clemson, right? Neff said, uh, this is a specific quote that I, I'm curious about. He said, it should be based on performance, football, success, postseason CFP. And I'll tell you, if he had left it off right there, that would have been awesome. Would have been great. But then he added this little bit. He said, how you help drive television viewership and metrics, things like that. Go look at Miami's TV ratings for this year. Cristobal's first team was putrid, but because of their brand name and because of their following, they were still one of the most watched teams in the ACC this past season, at least according to Nielsen ratings when they played on a network that was actually measured. They had a whole lot of RSNs and ACC network, etc. right? Neff tried to use Wake Forest as an example because they've won 19 games in the past two seasons, which is awesome. He said they're a different type of school, but how they've performed recently, they've invested. They've invested in coach retention and facilities, so they're a great example of investment breed success, which in theory would breed distribution. That's kind of the sequence of which we discussed. Now, when I look at this, and he talks about Wake Forest, but I see a team like Washington State who went 10-2 and in 2018, but ended up having to play in the Alamo Bowl as opposed to a New Year's Six Bowl due to television contract. The Sugar Bowl was forced to take Texas, who went 9-4 and four in that regular season and was actually ranked lower than Washington State due to a contract pitting the Big 12 against the SEC. The Orange Bowl in 2019 had to put number 24 Virginia against Florida in their bowl game. Wake Forest went 10-3 and in 2021, and they had to play Rutgers in the 11 a.m. Gator Bowl on New Year's Eve. <laughs> it's just, I understand that they were supposed to play Texas A&M, But it's still ridiculous. The payout for the Gator Bowl is less than the ReliaQuest, the Music City, the Alamo, the Cheez-It, the Texas, and the Holiday Bowls, along with the CFP and all the New Year's Six. Clemson and NC State finished behind Wake Forest in the ACC standings that season. Wake Forest had more overall wins than both teams, and Wake went to the Gator Bowl with a payout of $5.35 million, while Clemson went to the Cheez-It Bowl with a payout of $6.071 million, 
and NC State went to the Holiday Bowl with a payout of $6.532 million. Yes, I suppose winning can help you earn more distribution, but we're not going to kid ourselves here at Winning Cures Everything. An unequal revenue distribution system will not be a meritocracy, especially when you see suggestions like these tossed in for TV metrics and viewership, etc. The bowl system puts teams that get the most eyeballs against other teams that get the most eyeballs and they will be paid according. Like I'm, I'm personally curious how this is going to work because yes, the ACC is going to have to find a way to keep their big brands happy, but let's not kid ourselves into believing this argument from Clemson's AD about unequal revenue distribution and how teams like Wake Forest can work their way up into the college football world. Like it, his job is to sell it for sure. So he can earn as much money for his athletic department as possible. But anyway, this thing gets sliced. It, it's, it's not going to be any way the thing gets sliced that's not right down the middle, like there's always going to be advantages for the bigger brand. So hearing that they are even discussing this lets me know that this is the beginning of the end of the ACC because we have been down this road before. We have seen it. Maybe they can find a way to make it work, but I ain't buying it. Psst. Hey, if you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and of course, jump in the comments. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. And make sure to leave a nice five-star review. You can follow Gary on Twitter, at GaryWCE. And the show is at Winning Cures. Be sure to check out the merch in our web store and share the show.